Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 12. For man also knoweth, watch this, not his time. As the fishes are taken in an evil net, and as the birds are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. If I were to get you to take out a piece of paper and get a pen, and I were to ask you this, or ask you to do this, write down the date of your death. Could anybody in here do that? Not unless you're going to kill yourself today. Okay? If I, if I had a definite date and it was today or tomorrow, I would, I'd have to come talk to you. You'd probably have to commit you somewhere. But um, uh, nobody knows the date of his death. And that's what Solomon means in that first statement. For man also knoweth not his time. Uh, note on that third point down there that I've got my mother. Okay? Uh, I was in a gospel meeting in Bremen, Georgia, and I get a call on Monday night that my mom is very, very sick and has been taken to the hospital. And um, so um, I said, okay, I'll be... My brother said, Vic, she's not going to die immediately, so just stay there. I'll keep you updated. The meeting went through Thursday night. I get through on Thursday, and um, I go straight to Memphis and go to the hospital and take over for my brother. And um, it was, uh, let's see, that following Tuesday, no, that following, yeah, Tuesday, my mother, she quit eating and she quit drinking completely. She said, I don't want anything else. We said, okay, so uh, we didn't give her anything. And uh, that next Sunday, we uh, moved, we decided we were going to move her on Monday to hospice. And so we moved her to hospice and they said, they told us two things, okay? They said, well, the first thing they told us was seven days after a person quits eating and drinking, that's usually about the longest that they'll last. So if she quit eating and drinking that previous Tuesday, she was going to die on Tuesday, okay? Uh, it was Tuesday night, and my brother and I, we were in the room, and it was about 9 o'clock, and we said, you know, uh, we're going to leave, and we'll be back tomorrow. And hospice told us, she said, she has about... 24 hours, that's all that she has. And, uh, you know, they do this all the time. They see this all the time. And so we felt comfortable going home. As soon as we got home, we get a phone call. My mom was gone, okay? And she didn't last the 24 hours. She lasted one hour. And the reason I say that is this. Here's a person right on the verge of death. We know that she only has a few hours to live. And here's hospice telling us about 24 hours. And she died an hour later. Well, guess what? No man knoweth his time, do we? I don't care how educated you are in watching individuals die. You don't know the time of a person's death. Notice that he gives two illustrations there, okay? He says it's like fishes that are caught in an evil net. Uh, if a fish knew he was going to be caught in a net, would he swim where he's swimming? No, he'd be kind of dumb, wouldn't he? Don't swim in them waters. Okay, there's nets there. Uh, but he doesn't know that. He doesn't know when he's going to get caught, and therefore he continues to swim there. Notice he gives another illustration. As birds are caught in the snare. I find it interesting when you go back and study. Uh, they didn't have shotguns and rifles and all that kind of stuff in order to kill birds. How do they catch birds back then? Yeah, they had to catch them in nets. They put big nets up between trees and those birds would fly into those nets. Well, you know, here's a bird. It's his common traveling place. And all of a sudden, one day, there's a net up. He doesn't know that. Here he comes flying through there, bap, caught in the net. If he'd known, he wouldn't have been there, would he? But he didn't what? He didn't know. Okay, And it's the same way with us as far as death is concerned. We just don't what? We just don't know. Now listen to how he describes this. So are the sons of men snared in a what? In an evil time. Okay, um, And then he says this. When it falleth suddenly upon them. I wrote down some examples of this happening suddenly. A fall, has a fall sometimes resulted in a death? 
Yeah, you take an elderly person and uh, they're just fine. All of a sudden they fall, they break a hip, and within a matter of days, they're no longer living, aren't they? And, uh, or sometimes the fall itself can cause death, can it? And uh, how about a sudden illness? Doesn't that happen to individuals oftentimes? Just a sudden illness. Kathleen's mother uh, was that way in a very sad situation. Got COVID and then a week later uh, she passed away even after going through a very uh, difficult operation and surviving that. And then uh, uh, COVID uh, took her. So uh, something very sudden. A car accident. Uh, you know, many individuals have been killed in car accidents, and uh, uh, you get that phone call. We had a member at uh, Eastwood, and her son was killed about a mile from her house. And uh, she said, "I can remember." She said, "I can remember uh, hearing something hit something." She said, "I can remember hearing sirens and all kinds of stuff near my home." And little did she know that was her son who had perished in that accident and so you just you just don't know do you and it, it's sad uh, a mishap while swimming or fishing uh, we have one of our good friends in uh, Brooklyn Arkansas he was a well-trained uh, paramedic and uh, he did all kinds of rescues uh, and they were training one day on deep sea rescues and somehow when he was training uh, he got upside down and he needed to go to the surface and he went down instead of up and before his teammate could get to him, he drowned it. And uh, I mean, I'm talking about a highly qualified, high, highly skilled guy. He was only about uh, 40, 42 years old uh, when he passed away. And uh, um, it was just sad. Heart attack, stroke, embolisms, uh, victims of shootings. Guys, we just don't what? We don't know. And it can come suddenly upon us, can, we, can it not? It is... Death that brings the evil time that Solomon mentions. Okay? So are the sons of men snared in a what? In an evil time. I don't know any of us who like to get a call about a friend or a family member or a member of the church who has passed away. That is not a good call, is it? And it immediately becomes an evil time, doesn't it? Okay, And the word evil doesn't always mean uh, sinful and wicked. It just means a very hard time, a very difficult time, a time of struggle and hardship. And it is during those times. It involves hurt, sadness, grief, tears, depression, and a lot of other emotions, doesn't it? And so Solomon reminds us that uh, we're, we're all temporal. None of us are eternal in nature. One of these days we will all what? die. And folks, listen to me. It could be what? It could be suddenly, couldn't it? When you least expect it. Unbelievable. Any questions, comments, anybody? Y'all are awful quiet. This was not a positive, uplifting verse, was it? Y'all look awful depressed. Boy, unreal. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 13. Solomon changes his subject. Hallelujah. And um, But he makes a statement and uh, uh, it's just a verse by itself. Listen to what he says. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Now, if you just pull that verse out of context, you have no clue what Solomon is talking about. Okay? But again, notice point A. Solomon has spent a lot of time doing what? Searching, researching, experimenting, looking examining, bringing things so that he can test them out. It's a big experiment he's been on. No cost, no time, no place is out of his reach. And as he was researching, he saw something great, didn't he? Is that what he says? It's what he says. This wisdom have I also seen under... Uh, also under the sun. And it seemed what? Great unto me. Are there little bitty insignificant things that happen in life? Oh yeah, all the time, right? All the time. Um, Vic went to Walmart. Who cares? You know, everybody goes to Walmart, right? Uh, you know, you lose your phone. Now I know you care, but it ain't that big of a deal, you know? It's not that big of a deal to lose your phone. You know, everybody does that occasionally, don't they? Sometimes they lose their phone and have it in their hand. 
Okay, Kathleen did it the other day. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? It's in your hand. <clears throat> Just like sometimes your glasses are where? On your head. But notice Solomon says he didn't see something insignificant. He said, I saw something what? Something great. Something great. And as you're not reading ahead and you're just thinking about that verse, you think, is it going to be of great significance? Right? There's some things that are of great significance, aren't there? Is it going to be an event that brings great joy to us? Is that the kind of event it is? I'd love to read about that, wouldn't you? Well, it ain't getting any gooder. It could be great work. It could be. You know, I mean, very, very well could be. Will it be something that describes a great injustice in the world? And there's some of those that are great, are there not? Okay. Very, very interesting. Let me ask you something. When individuals look at something, perceive something, do people perceive and look at things differently? Yeah. It amazes me how, how different our perception of the exact same thing can be. You know it? You can have a woman standing there and one man will say, Boy, that's a pretty woman. And you know what another guy would say? Don't say it. Okay. He might say, I don't think she's that pretty. Okay. But isn't it true? You know, one guy just thinks she's a knockout. Another one thinks, you can take her, right? And the same goes for guys. I see you women looking at me harshly. Okay, the the same thing goes for guys. But perception is totally different, isn't it? Now think about this. Solomon says what? I'm about to talk to you about something I've seen under the sun that is what? That is great. Now when we read it, and we find out what it is, because of our perception, we might say what? Nah, I don't know if it's that great or not. Okay? Now the reason I say that is this. Uno. Folks, Solomon says it's great. Who is Solomon? He's the wisest man in the world other than Jesus. If he says it's great, then it's what? It's great. Don't, don't you dare think in your mind, oh, this ain't great. And guess what else? He's inspired by someone. Who? Yeah, the Holy Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God speaking through him saying, this is great. So don't you dare say what? This ain't so great. Folks, this is a great thing that Solomon has seen under the sun. Okay? And he illustrates it in the very next two verses. There was a little city, and few men within it. And there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Wow. Does that happen a lot of times? You know, happens all the time, doesn't it? You know, uh, it's easy to take advantage of the weak, isn't it? It's easy to conquer those who are small. And when you see uh, men in great power, guess who they attack first? Yeah, they attack the weak, they attack the small, because they know we don't have to put much effort, we don't have to put much energy, we don't have to put many resources into this, and guess what we can do? We can overthrow them. Okay, and Solomon's seen this in his lifetime. Okay? Now, I find it interesting uh, how he talks about it. It sounds like war, doesn't he? This great king comes against this city and he says he does what? He builds bulwarks against it. We don't use that word very often, do we? Any of y'all ever bought, built a bulwark? You know? You don't tell your kids, why don't you go outside and build a bulwark, kid? Nobody says that. What in the world is a bulwark? It's a, it's a fortification against... When, when you play an army as a kid, it's a fortification like they did back in the Civil War that allowed you to attack without getting hit. Okay. Anybody else? A snare. 
Now think about it. Th th apparently, this city has walls, does it not? Yeah. Okay? And he's building a bulwark against it. Has anybody ever studied the overthrow of Tyre? The city Tyre, T-Y-R-E, ever studied that? There is a mainland Tyre, okay? And there is a island Tyre. Okay? And they're, they're not that far apart. Okay? You can jump in that water and you could swim from mainland to the island pretty easily. Okay? But there was water that was there. And um, we find that um, when Tyre was being besieged, many of the inhabitants of the inland Tyre moved out to where? To the island. Why? Harder to get to us, right? You know, you're going to have to get out in the water, you're going to swim to us, you're going to have to do something in order to get to us. Okay? Well, guess what? Oh, Alexander the Great wanted them. Do you know it? And guess what he did? He built a causeway out to Tyre. He took rocks, he took dirt, he took logs, he took whatever he could do and threw those things into the ocean and built him a road out to the island of Tyre so that he could overthrow it. Okay? So here's, here you come again, here you're a king and you're coming against this city and you need to get over the walls, don't you? So I'm going to build a what? I'm going to build a bulwark. I'm going to build a ramp that will allow me to come up to the top of that city and overthrow it. Okay? I don't have to go through the gates. They may be being penetrable. But they would build uh, bulwarks. They would build these ramps all around the city so that they could overcome that city. So here's this king. He wants that city so bad that he's built these bulwarks against it. I put a lesson there. There are those in our world who are our enemies, aren't they? These enemies will seek to overthrow us. This is true in our personal lives with regard to our community, with regard to our nation, with regard to the church itself. Folks, here's an evil king wanting to overthrow another city. We need to remember some things about our enemy. The enemy is strong. The enemy is not your friend. Okay, I don't, I don't care how much good you think the enemy is doing for you. An enemy is never your what? He is never your friend. The enemy is smart. The enemy possesses many skills. And the enemy will do all he can do to destroy you. Is it easy to forget that? Yeah. This man would do anything to overtake this city. Even build a bulwark. Regardless of how long it takes. Guys, go study some of the cities that were overthrown. And sometimes it would take six months, eight months, a year, two years to overthrow a city. Okay, The destruction of the city of Jerusalem began around 67 A.D. and was not completed until 70 A.D. That's three years. That's a long time, is it not? Those guys didn't care. I want the city. I'll have the city. It will be mine. Unbelievable. The note there, never, never underestimate your who? Your enemy. So you got the picture, right? An enemy's come against a little city. He's besieging it. And what has he built? He's built bulwarks, ramps, so that he can get into that city. Solomon keeps the story going in the next verse. Now there was found in it a poor, wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet... No man remembered that same poor man. Wow. Notice what he says. Now there was found in it a what? A poor wise man. He doesn't say there was found in it a wise man. He first describes him as what? A poor wise man. Do we have much respect for the poor? Most people don't. Okay? We just don't have much respect for the poor. 
of society. You know, we don't want to be around them. We don't want to mess with them. We don't help them very much. Okay, we, we just don't want much to do with them. And all of a sudden, there's this poor man. Now, he's wise, but he's what? He's poor. Now, I wrote down, what's that? Absolutely. Notice I wrote down some things there. Because he was poor, he was not a man of what? Notoriety. He wasn't known to everybody in the city. Because he was poor, he didn't have a high level position in the city itself. Because he was poor, he was probably the most unlikely of anyone in the city that they thought might be able to help us overthrow this king who's come against us. Wow. And that's when the but comes, right? He was poor, but what? He was wise. He was wise. The socioeconomic status of an individual does not determine, determine how knowledgeable and how wise a person is, folks. You know that? There have been some very poor, poor, poor people who have become very significant individuals in our history. Haven't there? Some of the very ones you thought would never make it. Make. It's unbelievable. Wisdom is acquired through education. Wisdom is obtained by listening to others. Wisdom is gained from the experiences of one's life, is it not? I've seen a lot of people who have a bunch of book knowledge, but they aren't very wise. You know that? They're not very wise. Here's a poor man. Doesn't have much monetarily, physically, but he has what? He has wisdom. Wow. The poor wise man, note this, by his wisdom did what? Delivered the city. Unbelievable. Many will listen to the rich and powerful, powerful until evil is about to prevail, right? You know, we, we think we've got people in positions of leadership. Uh, they've got the knowledge. They've got the training. They're supposed to have the know-how. And we listen to them until what? Until all else fails, don't we? Here's that poor man. He needs to say something. I've got, I've got the cure for this. I've got the way to win this battle. Ow. Just hush up, little poor guy. Go sit in your corner over there. Until when? Until that poor man is the only hope that is needed. And then guess what we do? We listen, doesn't it? When evil is about to prevail, then guess what? It doesn't matter who provides the deliverance, does it? The poor, the frail, the weak, the feeble, the infirm, the elderly. When evil is at the gate, survival is the only thing that really matters. It is amazing what people will do just to what? Just to survive. And the tales about that are unbelievable. Think about it. They need this man to deliver them, so who are they going to listen to? We're about to listen to the poor man. That's who we're about to listen to. But notice his end. He delivers the city. We don't know what he told them. We don't know how. We just know that he had the wisdom to do it. And he did it. They listened to him and they conquered the king. They overthrew the king. They remained safe. They remained free. But guess what happened to the man? Yet no man remembered who? That same poor man. Isn't that something? He was not honored. He was not exalted to a high position. He did not become wealthy. He was simply what? He was simply forgotten. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Unbelievable. Now folks, look at point two. This is the thing that Solomon said is what? Is great. He said, I saw a great thing happen. And guess what it is? It is an injustice among humanity. That's what it is, an injustice. 
A wise man is not recognized. Deliverance from evil is not rewarded. Freedom receives no gratitude. Relief and joy find no exaltation of any sort. Sad, isn't it? Solomon said that's a great matter. Beverly, what were you going to say? Beverly? Oh, I was thinking about Abraham Lincoln. Oh, absolutely. He, he even struggled uh, in school, severely in school. I mean, he had a very difficult time. Uh, he even ran like for 10 different positions and, and was never elected. And uh, So yeah, he, he really struggled in life. And uh, guys, just because somebody doesn't appear to measure up to our standards, don't discount that individual, okay? Maybe one of the most smart, wise individuals you'll ever meet you know that and they may have a lot to offer you in your life okay and uh, it's very difficult for us to do that because we like to be around people who are same as us don't we and uh, you know we 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 miss out on a lot of humanity because of that Um, Solomon was really upset because this man what he was just forgotten he did a great deed a mighty deed and yet he was just simply forgotten. Um, are there a lot of people in our world who are just forgotten? Oh yeah, a lot of them. All righty, we will pick up there next week. Yes, sir.